Hey there, Rosie here with another episode of Let's Make a Blank, and today we're filling in that blank with a unicorn! Using basic craft supplies, we'll be making this absolutely adorable unicorn headpiece. It never stops making me laugh. For this art project's materials, I used a paper plate, some white paper, anything you have laying around the house will work great, a pair of scissors, some liquid glue, I also used a glue stick as a tool, not for the glue. A bucket of markers that I use for everything. Wait, I didn't invite you paintbrush, get out of here. And some yarn colors of your choice. The first step is going to be to remove the flat bottom of our paper plate. This is where our faces go. And the easiest way for me to do this is by poking a hole through the plate with a pen. That hole is going to be helpful for my scissors to fit through so it can cut out a small guide piece. And that guide piece is going to give us some extra room so our scissors can maneuver themselves around and make the cuts a little easier. I'm following the outside where the flat bottom meets the lip of the plate. I wanna keep as much of the flat bottom intact as possible because we're gonna be using it later. So after you cut it out, set it aside. And since this is a little bit of a rough cut, I'm gonna go back around and trim up that edge to be a little smoother. Since my face is going to go right up against that edge, I don't want it to be too ragged. And there we go. Now you're left with just the lip of your paper plate, which we will use to connect our ears and our horn, and we'll decorate it how we'd like. So let's start with our horn. Take that middle piece that we just cut out of our plate and use your guide shape you cut out to cut the piece in half. Now we have one long straight. Think of that as one side of the horn. So now cut out your other side of the horn to make a long triangle. And the bottom is a little uneven, so I'm just going to trim that up. And now we have the basic shape of our unicorn horn. Now it's time to decorate it. I just chose a couple colors I liked, and I want to make my horn look like the classic spiral unicorn horn. So I'm going to make stripes going in a diagonal line down the horn. And the reason I wanna make diagonal lines instead of straight lines for my stripes is that it's going to give the illusion that these four colors I'm using for my horn are all separate pieces of the horn, all twisted together to make one beautiful, colorful unicorn horn. And now we have to attach it to our headpiece. So I need to make the bottom fit a little bit nicer into that groove. So I'm cutting the bottom flat and then I'm bending it to fit in that curve of the lip. This is gonna let it sit a little nicer and when I put my glue down, I'm noticing that it is still a little stubborn. It doesn't want to sit there and dry, it keeps popping up. So I'm using my glue stick as a weight for the bottom. Now let's make our ears while that is drying. I'm folding a piece of white paper in half and I'll draw one ear over top. Since it's folded in half, when I cut out my one ear, it will make two. And mine is just like a big triangle for an ear. It can be however you'd like it to be though. So now we're going to cut out our one ear. Since it's folded, it'll be two. Oh, well, I cut on the folded side, which is not what I was planning on doing, but that's okay. Now I just cut to separate the ears, no harm done. And now we have two sweet little horsey ears. But I wanna decorate these a little more. It is a unicorn after all. So I'm going to draw a triangle inside of each of these triangles to be the inside of the ear. I'm going to keep the outside white and plain because this is just going to be kind of a basic mask, but you can personalize this however you would like. Since I love purple, I'm going to color the inside purple. And when you finish your ears, you're ready to attach them to your headpiece. I'm cutting mine to be a little bit rounded at the bottom so that they fit into the lip of the plate, but you can keep them flat. It really won't be an issue because this is a much lighter paper than what is used for the paper plate horn. And because it's that plain, lightweight paper, all you really need is a little bit of glue and then you smush it into that lip and it'll be totally fine. It shouldn't give you any problems. 
And this leaves us with a perfectly lovely unicorn headpiece. And if you don't have any yarn or a yarn substitute, this can be the end of the project for you. But I do have some yarn, so I wanna keep going. The yarn is going to be the hair in our unicorn's mane. So we want all the pieces to be around the same size. And that's why I'm winding it around my four fingers as a guide. And this will make me a loop of yarn, which I can then cut in half. So if I pull it tight, my scissors are going to find the top for the first cut, and my fingers will have found the middle of the yarn for my second cut. And this is gonna give me double the amount of pieces of hair, all the same size. Let's do it again for the purple yarn. I'm winding it around my fingers, but if your hand is a little smaller, you can use your whole hand, as long as you're winding gently so you don't hurt yourself. You can cut your yarn loop in half now, and then I like to mix together the yarn threads so that I have more of a blended multicolor mane afterwards. And I have a little trick to keep your yarn bundled together. You're gonna take one strand and separate it from the rest. And when you pinch the rest of the yarn together at one end, you'll use that single yarn strand to tie a knot around the whole group. That way, you won't have any yarn falling off. It will all stay put a lot better. Unless you don't wait for your liquid glue to dry and just start swinging your headpiece around right away, then it won't. The yarn was a little too heavy for just glue, so I had a great idea. I could use more yarn to tie the mane to the headpiece. So I took a length of yarn, and it doesn't matter how long that length is because you'll end up trimming the end pieces if they're too long. But I wrapped it around my unicorn horn and the plate once or twice. That's going to anchor your mane to the top of your mask so it won't slide down by the ears. It'll stay right up at the horn. Then I'm gonna take my length of yarn and I'm going to lace my longer string that I had wrapped around the mask through the bundle and double knot it so it stays secure. Looking back, I wouldn't have used the glue in the first place at all because I think that this method works really great in keeping the mane in place. Here I am trimming those extra bits of yarn and there we go. You can see just the loop at the back. You can barely see it in the front and those bangs are secure. There you go, you have a unicorn. If you'd like an extra artist challenge, you can decorate the plate part that goes around your face for some extra pizzazz. But even if you don't, I still think that this is a very sweet and silly mask. I can't stop laughing and smiling when I wear it and I hope that you enjoy making it as much as I have. I wanna finish this video by saying thank you to you for taking time out of your day to do art with me. I'm so lucky to have a young artist interested in learning more art. So thank you so much, and I'll see you at the next one. Bye.